So the, when, when I say something like, we're not getting it, we're not aware, we as an industry, we're, we're not recognizing just how massive a transformation this is. I, I, can, I can think of in my own personal life. I mean, I, I know, a, I know a, a lady who just recently took an early retirement package from one of the big telcos. Uh, she was she spent almost the last 20 years of her career there managing the logins of I think it was 10 or 15 different systems they're fairly sensitive important systems at the telco she was a team of 30 people that did nothing but she she knew she knew how to provision the logins she knew who what people should have rights to what aspects of the systems she knew when someone was asking for an exception who would need to approve that she knew how to perform kind of audits on the system to make sure activities weren't being, you know, stuff like that. And of course, she would know to every once in a while check and deprovision accounts for people leaving and stuff like that. Well, that's 30 people for, let's call it a dozen systems. By now, it's super obvious, right? That is nothing that automation could not do, unfortunately for my friend, better, more effectively, more accurately. Right and even change faster. Her team of 20 people have to go through training on, by the way, here's the new rules, here are the new roles, here's the, look for this thing and audit. Do it more often, oh, we need more people, right? You tell software to do those things much faster, much easier, and they execute those at machine speed, right? So we have to, we have to recognize that there are vast numbers of people in the current way of thinking and the bot on every desk or the bot for every employee kind of idea kind of reinforces this. Yeah, you got a bunch of people and all the same steps. You just do them a little bit faster. That's not where we're going. Because when the world sees the transformations that our customers are, are getting and when, when, the, when, the, when, when this really does take hold and, and, and those who, are, who have a like mind like us get this really, really well established, you'll see like, no, 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 that's not even the goal, right? It's now, why do I need any more than two or three people in identity management? There are hundreds now at, at a typical large enterprise. Provisioning accounts, checking on accounts. Hundreds of access, people in identity management? Yeah, just, just maintaining. That's unfathomable. Isn't it though? But, but it's true, it's true because, and in fact, it's actually super complicated. And I have, a lot of, I have a lot of respect for the people who are in that role because frankly, it's a ton of tech they're trying to sort out and it's a bunch of complex rules that they're trying to implement and they're trying to Say, you know, protect the business by only provisioning rights to people who really need them for the period of time they need them and all of that kind of stuff, right? So the mission is clear. It's really hard to do. It's constantly changing because people are constantly coming and going from the organization and even within the organization, their roles change, they move jobs, they need access to things. That so it's actually quite, it's, it's, a, it's actually a huge um, uh, uh, outsourced um, services uh, project for many of them as well. So it's easy to see those kinds of things and think, wait a minute, software can do that so much better, right? And it can orchestrate those activities. It can workflow into, into people who need to make decisions when that's necessary. It can audit systems and activities a whole lot faster and better. Um, and that's, that's actually a good thing, right? In the end, an autonomous organization doesn't even need that many user interfaces for people to actually use. That's the funniest part. When you think about the effect we're about to have, and we already are, so keep, just take an existing customer, building manufacturer, building materials for manufacturing company, right? Took six apps off their, uh, their field organization's desktop, put Krista on, right? Now the backend systems are still there, but from a user training, a user access, a, an identity provisioning, and a maintenance, and all of that nonsense. Think about all of the nonsense that just disappeared because six apps are no longer, from the user's perspective, six apps. It's just Krista, right? There's, there's, there's a, there is a dramatic tr digital transformation right there, yeah. right? And you, you know what the CEO said. Improved cash flow, reduced inventory levels. Those are top-line boardroom items. Those are, if, if you walked in there saying, I can, in an eight step process, I can take 30% of, of one of those steps away. I say, great, please do that. But why are you in this room? You go in and say, I can improve cash flow. I can reduce your inventory levels. And there were a number of other great benefits too. They're like, okay, great, how? What would that take? 
Because today, it's a sad little commentary on the way we do things in IT. You know, we, we read just recently, a McKinsey report says 70% of all digital transformation projects fail, right? And every one of the failures was attributed to people. people. That's right. My people suck. So therefore, my digital transformation project failed. Well, you know, at some point, I'm, I'm guilty too. I'm guilty too. I've spent an entire career building complex things, giving them to people saying, this is what the business needs. The user saying, this is hard, this is complicated, I don't want to use it. And me saying, well, you're stupid or lazy, right? No. You won't figure it out, you're lazy. Or you can't figure it out, you're stupid. You know, there is a point, and that's all, that's all that's happening in the digital transformation world, right? We're playing the same thing. I was taught that when I first entered this world. And until recently, uh, in this project, I just thought that was the physics of the way that IT worked. Yeah, we always shift the burden to the user and make them figure it out. Yeah, and if they don't, we have forcing functions. It's your job, I'm gonna make you go to training, we're gonna give you a buddy to, to show you how to do this for a little while and then we're gonna drop you in the deep end. Whatever the, whatever the forcing function is, let's face it, just being, right? I mean, this is part of the DNA of why we built Krista. If, if we don't recognize that we as an industry are actually at fault, if we assume that people are suddenly gonna change in their ability to cope with change, or all of a sudden change in their IQ, if somehow we think that all of a sudden a step function is going to occur in either of those attributes, just because the business is doing this digital transformation thing, we are the ones who need to be to get our own. We're the ones resistant to change, and we're the ones who need to get our IQs checked, right? We're the ones that are stupid or lazy, because we were stupid if we thought that all of a sudden they were going to be able to deal with this, because they've been not being able to deal with it for our entire career, and we're just giving them more to deal with. It sounds stupid on our part. Lazy because we have not, as an industry, thought this isn't working out really well, is no. it? Why don't I stop doing the same old thing I know to do? Why don't I actually work a little bit? And why don't I figure out, could I change my approach and get a better outcome for those folks? Which again, goes straight to the DNA of this company. Our tagline is technology that understands people. It's amazing that if you just spend a little bit of time in the psychology of how people embrace change and the conditions on which they don't, you can make IT deliver really well, right? You just have to recognize technology has to understand people, not the other way around. And as soon as it does, you get 100% adoption.